You see, they blame it on boredom, this getting drunk in the park, and they blame it on boredom, terrorising people in the dark. And on this particular cold, dark night, they'd chosen their usual path. They were stupid, drunk, and bored, and someone was going to feel their wrath. Basically, what I'm trying to do with my poetry is leave a positive mark on the earth. I'm not trying to change the world, because I don't think that one person alone can do that, but I am trying to make a little bit of a difference. And art is so not just about going into galleries. I mean, there's art everywhere. I, I like art that is real. Me, I call myself a performance poet, but I am a spoken word artist, and I do love hip hop. I've not written a poem about something that I haven't experienced, because I can't write about something if it hasn't happened to me, I just can't, I can't feel it. People getting beaten up, people trying to commit suicide, um, people talking about sex or violence, you know, if it happens to me, pad and pen, or whatever I can get my hands on, you know, I'd do it in my own blood if, I, it, was, if it was there in my head and ready to come out. You know, that's what I write about, it's real life and my experiences. <laughs> This noose around my neck, it has my bank manager's name on it and the chair holding me up's about to crack. Suicide Note Bank Manager Lament is about um, how the banks are ripping people off by overcharging them. The only people that really suffer when you overcharge people are the poor people, people that can't afford to pay their bills. Losing 25, 75, 125 quid a month to the bank is crazy. Me and a guy called Mark Webb, who's an incredible cinematographer, uh, we put together a video as if it was a, a suicide note um, and I did my piece with a noose around my neck as if I was about to hang myself. Seems a bit dramatic but it had the right effect. Uh, we put it on the Consumer Action Group website, the guy that started that said that he thought the video was iconic. Lots of people looked at it, we put the Consumer Action Group web address at the back of it so that people could go there, they could find out more information on how to fight the banks and get their money back. Now, now, now listen. Spoken word is a great medium because it bridges the gap between poetry and hip hop. That is poetry, you know? But then you've also got the hip hop heads who, they, they won't read poetry because they see it as, you know, hip hop's hip hop. Hip hop's about, you know, rapping and being hard and bling, whereas poetry's about being soft and pathetic. Spoken word kind of bridges the gap in between that and brings people together, I suppose. I would have never have got into poetry if it wasn't for listening to, I suppose, gangster rap when I was a kid. You know, when I listened to N.W.A. and Ice-T, you know, and they were, you know, they were getting me in trouble for playing offensive music. That's what got me into reading poetry and writing poetry was listening to hip hop music. There's a famous poet whose name always escapes me. He writes his email address at the back of his books. And I wrote to him once and I said, I don't have a specific style, I just kind of write. You know, I, my style from poem to poem is very different. What's wrong with me, you know? And he wrote back to me and he just said, Matt, don't bother. It's rock and roll. Write it as it comes out and leave it. And uh, yeah, no, I mean, that was probably the best piece of advice I've ever been given. As the judge handed down the sentence, now it sounded a lot like life. He said, get this idiot shackled and in a cage tonight. There's so much art out there. There's art on the bottom of skateboards. There's, there's art being performed live on the streets. Um, you know, and art is everywhere. It can touch everybody because somewhere at some time you will have seen something and gone, wow, 